Hi, I'm Enoch Mountain Lovu, and welcome to the first ever Nuggets, Briefs, and Tidbits on Cursed with Knowledge, a series where I present brief facts and opinions on a particular subject. This week, I am talking about intelligence, so here I will address one of the most commonly contested facts about it. Because this is meant to be brief, I will also skip the breakdown of this definition of intelligence. Truth is, I don't actually need it here, so let's save that for the main episode. In this nugget, I want to address the heritability of intelligence. Most people are uncomfortable with the idea that intelligence is an inherited trait because that would suggest that their intellectual potential is out of their control. This also brings an interesting plot twist to the problems your child may be facing in school, especially in those early primary school years, because a grade 5 end of term test isn't something that one needs to cram overnight for. In short, what I'm trying to say is your child's problems in school may not entirely be their fault or the teacher's fault for that matter. It may have a lot to do with you, actually. Anyway, it is an established fact that a large part of one's intelligence is inherited from their parents. Neuroscience and psychology agree that about 50% of one's intelligence is inherited. That is why intelligent parents often have intelligent children, and in some cases, this manifestation is very specific. Like in situations where musically gifted parents end up having musical proteges as children. But in these situations, the environment is also an important factor. That is where that other 50% comes in. So basically, intelligence is a classic nature-nurture situation. And how the two play out is that the nature, which is the inherited genetic potential, needs to be stimulated by the right environment to manifest fully. What this means, therefore, is that even if a child has a genetic potential for an IQ of, say, 160, if their environment is not nurturing enough through such things as a proper education, productive social engagements, even nutrition, then the child may never reach that IQ of one's kissy. On the other side of the coin, however, it also means that despite one's best efforts and how well one's development environment can be, if your intelligence quotient is capped at 110 by your genes, I am sorry to say this, but you can't exceed that. Which is why, despite some kids in primary school having been the children of teachers or taking expensive extra lessons and tuitions or studying harder and longer or having a fuller lunchbox than I did, they still couldn't touch this. Now, although nature and nurture are often demonstrated as having equal influence on a person's overall intelligence stats, I believe genes have a greater role as evidenced by genetic disorders such as Down syndrome. What's more, it can also be observed that intelligence always seems to have a way of manifesting itself in any environment. That is why even children with no formal education will often show exceptional abilities in problem solving and various other familiar skills. Simply put, intelligence can manifest in different ways, but that's a topic for another day. Today's takeaway is that in the same way that you look beyond outer beauty to investigate the beauty of the heart, let us also take time to investigate the beauty of a potential partner's brain for the sake of the children. I'm Inok Martin Lovu, and this has been Nuggets, Briefs, and Tidbits on Cursed with Knowledge.